Hi everyone, my name is Lahir from ABCs of Anesthesia and today we're going to go through a couple of really vital, really important things which is laryngoscopy technique and intubation. This is a laryngoscopy blade. This is a size 4 Macintosh blade, it's probably one of the most common ones you'll see. It's one I go to pretty much every single time. And all it is, is it's this handle, and this handle is a power source. You can check the light by just depressing that there. And then the blade, which comes in pretty much quite a number of sizes, but the common sizes in adults are size 4 and size 3. You can just latch it on like that. What I do then is I check that the light is working. One of the most important things that you'll find is that you need a really good light. If this light isn't bright enough, you'll be in there trying to find the trachea and everything will be just dark. If you really want a bright light, this is what makes or breaks a difficult intubation. So there's a couple of different sizes that you'll be using when intubating adults. There's a size three and a size four. Now, in my opinion, I go to a size four every single time. A size four blade has the length for me to get down into the vellecular. That's that spot just at the base of the tongue um, where the epiglottis joins the tongue and that's where you need this to end up to make sure that you get the best view possible. Sometimes you'll be handed a size 3 blade for smaller adults and females, but this I find occasionally doesn't get down to the molecular. For that reason I'll go to a size 4 every single time. The size 3 blade has one advantage in my eyes. Next time you're in, when you're in theatre, try this. Where you get someone to press down on the, tip of the, on the tip of the blade and you find that it's far easier to lift this up than lift the size 4. The size 4 blade has a much larger lever which means that if someone's pressing down and you're trying to lift here, it's far harder to do that. That said, most people will gain the strength and technique possible to injure anyone with a size 4. There's quite a few different blades that you might choose. There's the straight Miller blade, the McCoy blade, and also the varying types of blades you can get with video laryngoscopes like the D-Blade and these are hyperangulated blades. I'll talk about those on another video. When I'm intubating, the very first thing I do after the patient's anesthetized, the patient's paralyzed, is I tilt the head back. What that does is it tilts the head on the atlanta occipital joint that opens the mouth slightly and also gives me a better aperture down into the trachea. At that point, what I do is I then insert the laryngoscope. The laryngoscope, most people will tell you to insert it like this. Now what I do is I insert it slightly to the side. You can imagine that in some people, occasionally, this handle might get in the way or the chest might get in the way of this handle. If I insert to the side, that's never a problem because there's always space around here. And once it's in, I then tilt it round. Now the very next step, slide the tongue from the right to the left. At this point, I'm pretty much down straight back into the oropharynx. At this point, I do a tilting motion. What I'm trying to do is get that tip and just trace down the tongue. So the tongue is the road down to the molecular. And I need to go all the way down into the molecular and I'm tilting on this axis. Just to give you another view, the laryngoscope blade is now inside the oral cavity. It's straight back down and I'm using that tip to trace down and rotating it on this axis as it traces down the tongue. Again, the tongue is the road down to the molecular where this tip needs to be. Now, after you've found the molecular, the best thing to do to optimize your view is to do this lifting motion. And that lifting motion, it's not what people normally do naturally, which is tilting back that's only going to lever against the teeth and won't provide any kind of aperture down in through the oral cavity to the trachea. What you need to do is lift towards the corner of the room. So what I get my trainees to do is look up at the corner of the room and literally pull there. Sometimes you still don't get a view and the very next step is to lift up the head. That's obviously can be quite difficult. I can get a really good view by just lifting the head. It opens up everything a lot better, but holding that can be really difficult. So what I do then is I get my assistant to help me with that by just holding that head up in the right position. The final thing I want to go through is that sometimes you just don't have enough momentum or force. And what you can do is you can bring your arm to the center and have that resting, say, on your chest. That way, pushing forward, even just pushing forward a little bit, improves the amount of force and amount of strength that you can have because you're not really lifting with your deltoid here. This is a pretty weak muscle in most of us. You actually just move your body forward and that helps lift as well. Sometimes you simply can't get a view in spite of everything that you've done. There's obviously a lot of things you need to follow. I'd follow the DAS, Difficult Airway Society guidelines, um, to make sure that you manage this in the absolutely appropriate way. Now there's a few things that can happen if you don't get the right view. 
Now, the way I think about this is APB, Assistance Paralysis Burp Bougie Blade. And we'll go through this in future videos in more detail. But I always ask for assistance, especially when you're junior, you need to have someone helping you and having extra hands and brains is always such an important thing because we're dealing with people's safety and people's lives here. So I get assistance. I think about paralysis. Is this patient paralyzed to the absolute right level? A paralyzed patient is invariably much easier to treat, uh, much easier to oxygenate and ventilate. And so I'll always consider that. Again, make sure you've got your boss there, your consultant there, because it's a tough decision to make for anyone, especially if you're junior. Finally, the three Bs, burp, bougie blade. Imagine I've got my laryngoscope here and I've got a view I get my hands and I put it on the larynx, on the thyroid cartilage, and then I move it backwards, upwards, and rightwards. And that can improve my view amazingly well. So that's the first thing I do. After that, now I still need my right hand, so I get the nurse to put their hands on the thyroid cartilage, and I may move the nurse's fingers as I see fit. That's a really good technique, so you know exactly where the hands are placed, and that way it really helps them because they can't see what you're seeing. It's really important that they've got their hands on the larynx so that you can manipulate those hands to make sure that you get the right view and they know exactly where you want that larynx. After burp, I ask for a bougie because often even with a bad view, a grade three view, I can still get the bougie underneath that epiglottis. Finally, the last step is asking for a blade, a different blade. Often these days, a video laryngoscope. Now just notice the order I had that in. Burp, bougie, then blade. I say burp first because you've already got your hands. You don't need to ask for anything else. Bougie is next because a bougie is often something that's in the theater um, just nearby but still takes a bit of time to get out. Finally, a new blade might be in another room. It might be in the theater complex and will take time. So I often get the theater technician or another nurse to go get that while I'm proceeding down these plans. So the last couple of tips. Imagine you've got a really good laryngoscopy view so you've got a great view of the cords and now you're about to place your tube in. Intuitively, you think that you just want to have the tube like this following the contour of your laryngoscope. But what I find is that that actually blocks your view. So you're never really sure if your tube's in there. Now, it's a really simple maneuver. You just turn your tube that side so it's lateral, it's horizontal. That way I can see the larynx, I can see the cords and I can see the tube passing in and it doesn't take any more change than simply a lateral a rotation clockwise 90 degrees and that's it. Now sometimes you just can't get the angle. The, an the larynx is maybe anterior and there's a couple of simple things you can do. You can have your tube already bent like that preset or I might just bend the tube on the pillow like so and as it slowly recovers its shape I then place it through the cords. So just to demonstrate with a video laryngoscope. Now these first few steps, I had to get my right hand on the head and that allows me to just angle the neck back, angle the head back and this opens up the mouth, giving me a much better trajectory to the trachea. So as I go in, I go to the right side of the tongue and you kind of sweep the tongue over to the left. It's hard to demonstrate on this mannequin um, because of the tongue being fixed, but that's the step I would take. So imagine right now that my laryngoscope blade is directly back. At this point, I then use the tongue. The tongue is again the road down to the vellecular. So I follow the tongue all the way down to the vellecular. The next step I want to do is lift towards the corner of the ceiling like so. And that opens up everything, allows me to see down into the trachea. After this step, sometimes you might not get a great view. What I do is I sometimes lift the head like this Lifting the head then allows me to you know, improve my view and I might get my technician or my nurse to help support that while I get the tube into the right spot. Sometimes my blade might be too far in. If it is, and that happens often when you first start out, all I have to do is slowly trace back until I can see the vellacula and see the cords. Now just to demonstrate inserting this tube, if I insert it this way, it blocks my view completely. But if I insert it to the side, it can really help my view. I hope you enjoyed those tips and uh, good luck with your next intubation.